Well, hello and welcome. This lovely lady that we have here today is a very, very dear and old friend of mine, not an old woman, but an old friend. (laughs) And um, I'm so excited to have you here, Nancy. Please tell me who you are, where you are and what you do. Well, it's really nice to see Elena. Elena and I go back decades, lifetimes, lifetimes in this life. Yes. my name is Nancy Valentine Smith, and I am a sacred technician. I am a woman of spirit. Um, I hold knowledge and I hold wisdom. Um, I am also an oracle. What I do is um, connect the people to the earth energies and the star energies. Um, I see also what's going on. I've been doing for the last few decades healings. Um, There's many things I do, but I'm a woman of spirit. I'm a woman of knowledge. And that pretty much, I think, covers it at this time. I love hearing (laughs) what you're saying because we did a little bit of work together a couple of years ago now where Mm -hmm. I helped write some stuff up for your website Mm -hmm. way back then. And Mm -hmm. it's lovely to hear how that message has evolved. Yeah, yeah, so beautiful. It's, it's so lovely. It, it has been. It has been a journey. Like I've, I've done this all my life. So I was born. I was born in uh, medicine way. So I come from a line of medicine men and women on my mother's side, my grandmother. So she first taught me as a baby and as a child. And so my whole life in growing up has been the foundations of spirit and the energy works. So right now, moving into the next stage and phase, it is being more grounded, mm-hmm. actually more grounded, um, this work and the journey. Yeah. And just really moving into it and accepting accepting that and moving into the fullness of that embodiment, yes. which is, I think, what we're all being called to do at this time. Yes. Is to move into our fullness and our, what we call our higher embodiment. Yes. You know? Yes. That's occurring. So pretty much that's what I, what I do. So my life is, my life is a spirit. I don't just go off to a clinic or a centre and, and do the spirit work, energy work. It encompasses the way I live, the way I live with my children. Um, it, it's in it's in the way we eat. It's in the way we move. It's 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 life. Yes, it so is. And you, I think you're a really great example of integrating all of the above day to day. You know, and I'd I'd love to know how you do that. Like, so say you're having a conversation with your partner, yeah. and and there's, a, there's always a few levels, I guess, to every conversation or every problem that we have in our lives, you know. There's the practical level, there's the functional sort of pragmatic and then there's the intuitive and then there's, I guess, so many levels. How does that work for you? Like if you if you have a conversation, say it's a difficult conversation with your partner or your daughter or are you accessing other levels of your existence during that conversation or are you just Nancy Smith having a chat about the day-to-day life or does it come in? How does well, that work for you? Well, well, the whole thing is, for me, is accepting all aspects of me. So I'm, I'm Nancy Valentine Smith, the medicine woman, the spirit, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm Nancy the mum, Nancy the partner, the sister, the friend, and so on. So what is happening as I continue to grow, and growing is clearing, clearing the stuff within, then what happens is I, I start having more space in my being. So all those different parts of me work together so I might be talking to my daughter who's 17 and that's a big age and being a mum and getting the shits and rah 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 but it, it the foundation is always that thing of connection and spirit so my foundations in every aspect with my partner with my children with everyone is connection Connection, so that energy comes through the conversation. I might be rousing on my daughter, but that energy—it's about energy. 
okay? Yep. It's about what am I holding? Am I holding the space from a space of disconnection, fear, separation? I'm holding my space and move around. Am I holding it from connection, belonging, love? So when I cook a meal, am I cooking it in that state of being or I'm, or I'm cooking it in separation and fear, which means whoever's eating my food is going to have a shit time, literally. No, but that, <laughs> but that, that is the energy. How are you holding yourself in the space? And, and that means to move into that space is to, is to do what I've always said, do the work on yourself. And the work is not necessarily having these major workshops, which is good if that's what you do because sometimes we need to do that. But in everyday life is simple things is one of the things that we use in our family when things come up, you know, if it's anger, you're pissed off, you're upset, you know, it's really natural to, to, for it to go out to externalise it, but it's almost like to the point now where we even like, no, no, it's not about my daughter, it's not about my partner, okay, because that's a that's a distraction, especially in this age. It's actually not what's happening on this external, okay. What has it stirred in me? Mm. And so for me, for example, the last couple of days I've been having argy-bargy, with my youngest daughter, the 17-year-old, and that triggered all these uh, feelings and emotions. I felt not heard. I felt disrespected. Went into that whole thing as a as a parent. Da, da, da. And I went and been to an argy bargy, but the, that aspect, that foundation, that connection was like, hold on, don't fall into that mosh pit. Don't fall into the mosh pit because you know what this looks like that you're going to end up having a massive argument, you're going to end up feeling crap, and then it's going to take ages to come out of this mosh pit. You have this moment to just step back and just go, what is it brought up for you? And so for me, what it was brought up, what it brought up for me, I felt not heard, I felt disrespected as a mum, and then I had to go and unpick it, okay, really unpick it and just went, oh, my goodness, because it's all the same. And it's all the same. We all are are going through the same thing. So all it was was me going, oh, my God, let's simplify. What's this about? This is about me needing to let go of control. Yes, I relate. I've got an 18-year-old. Yeah, it's all the same. We all have it. Whether, you know, mother, fathers, it's letting go of control. Then I have to go, where does that control come from? Because my stuff, my control is different from yours and, and someone else. Yeah. So simple. I went into the, the thing of the control. Control is about fear and survival. Yes. Okay. It, and so what you do, you go into it because you're feeling, because you're in that emotion. You're pissed off, you're angry, how dare you, how dare you, how could you speak to me? And then it's like, okay, what's that? I feel not respected. I feel not heard. I feel gaslighted. You name it. And then I went in because underneath all of that is underneath the anger and sadness. So I went into the sadness and it just, this is how my life is. This is how we move in our home. And then I just went, pow, grade two. Grade two, my year two teacher pulling me up in front of the class, accusing me of losing something, which she ended up founding, she found later, smacking me in front of the whole class and, and calling me stupid. Oh. And this is another interesting thing. And then there was a boy in the class who, for some reason, got upset. And I can't remember if he threw up or... or or wet himself, yeah. but all I remember, because I was in shock, all I remember, him and I were isolated from the class. Wow. And I remember her standing there saying to both of us that we were basically dirty. Oh. And so this thing stayed with me. So this this is how it works. It stayed with me, but it went into the recesses of my beings. Sure. It went into the back, back end of my cells 
So when things unfold later on, it's coming from that survival, yeah, mm. that pain, the fear. So this thing with my daughter helped me transmute it. And when and now, you say transmute, what does that mean for you? Transmute is you change the energy. So the tra- transmutation, and instead of directing it out, is that that went to the core, the original, which was in grade two, is I changing, changing that experience, the energy, the physical experience still exists, existed, sure. but it's changing the energy where I went, oh, my goodness, I could see clearly I'm not dirty. I can understand why I have I've had certain underlining beliefs that create our reality, that create our responses to the external environment and the emotional environment. Yes, yeah. which makes sense when you talk about clearing mm-hmm. because how can we access those things un- unless Absolutely. we clear all of the debris out of our vision and out of our perception and out yeah. of our feeling plane so that we can access that awareness. And yeah. awareness is transformative in itself. So, uh, simple questions you can do is just ask, you know, why has this pissed me off? Yes. And then you answer it, well, it's pissed me off because I'm never heard. I feel really disrespected. Keep asking questions. Why do you feel disrespected? And you'll get the shits asking a question and then it'll be just like it's it's important to do that rather than dive into a battle. So it was important I do that rather than dive into a battle with my daughter because then what happens, it's the clash and what we call the clash of the egos. Yes. And, and there's, there is no one, no one wins this battle. And you know what? That's what's happening on the planet. We're in this space and place where so much is coming up, okay? There is so much coming up and we really need to find our centre yes, and our stillness and really connect to our own truth. Yes. And, and move through these times. You know, when, when it's a time of, you know, great navigation of our inner world. And, and these are these is happening. So in your everyday life, when things come up, it's moving into that space. It's another thing I do is go, oh, when I remember is going, hey, well, this is actually an opportunity for me to move this block. Mm. This has been presented mm. in this interaction, mm. you know. Yes, and there's something about yeah. timing, isn't there? There's something about mm-hmm. the timing of when these blocks come up. You know, I yeah. had one of those last week. We were just talking off camera about this and it was a massive shift, it felt mm-hmm. like. But in order to have the massive shift, I had to have the massive meltdown that went along with it. And mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes those explosive feelings, those ones that are massive and unavoidably big and ugly and you know I mean you can call them things I don't want to describe them too negatively because it's actually the way we forge ourselves but but it's unpleasant you know there can be that big overwhelming feeling that feels Mm. unpleasant and I had one of those last week but sometimes that's the only way I can crack the shell you know it's like we build up these really tough shells and protections around these long-held truths Mm -hmm. and sometimes the only way to get through that protection that we naturally put on it Mm -hmm. to hide it away because we couldn't deal with it at that time not in its entirety not in its fullness you know and the only way that then we can get back to it is to is to crack that shell open and sometimes that takes a bit of force and a bit of fire and a bit of almost aggression you know and absolutely it's important and it's also important not to um extrapolate that or project it or blame others for those feelings absolutely. You know? because then because then the purpose of purpose we call we call that when people have the explosion and 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 the shakti energy and the fire energy the fire yeah. comes in and goes we need to burn this crap Okay, so it's 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 really important not to be burning down everything around you. Yes. So transmutation—that's transmutation—and then eventually, as you transmute more, 
you then, it then becomes, I always go, then you become responsible, which is the ability to respond to yeah. anything that gets brought up. Then you have more, when you're clearing, you end up having more space in your being. Yes. To, 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 to step back in and go, hey, this is happening again. This is a repeat. I'm not going to go there. So you don't end up having to have those explosions because mm-hmm. when you see it, then you have the opportunity to go to your pain body, emotional body, this is when you've done a lot of clearing that you can go, okay, we're actually going to move on a different path. Yes, and you choose. doesn't mean you don't cry. It doesn't mean you don't. It's like the tears that come up or the anger you feel becomes what I call an alchemist. So your tears and your anger become alchemy, alchemists. They're the alchemists where you, where they don't drag you into the mosh pit where you're actually there working with the tears. And mm. so as you, re- you actually consciously work mm, with yeah. the tears or the anger. And when you move into that space, what happens is what we call, what we call in medicine way is then you start becoming a conscious creator of your reality. And then you start seeing the magic in your life because you're you're there not being at the mercy, okay, at the mercy of of unfinished business um, in all spiritual life, in in the ancient times, in spiritual school, in an initiation process with the First Nation people. We all go through, and we go all through the different levels. That is applied in our everyday life. We always look as medicine people and going, okay, this person's spending too much in the emotions. Okay. But we need to pull them out, pull them out of the waters. Okay. They need some fire energy or too much fire. Mm. Need to pull. So, so. Part of the thing is is really ultimately as you move through your everyday life is asking yourself the questions. Mm. There is those moments, as you were saying, that there has to be that cathartic release. Sure. Yeah, I agree. You know? I yeah. agree. And Absolutely. what's so interesting about through. Absolutely. And what you're saying, what I love about what you're saying is a couple of things I just want to highlight. One is you're talking about clearing to make space. And when you make space, you can transmute, but that also means you can hold space for others. That's that beautiful expression of holding space. What that means to me is that you have the space in you to allow someone to go through that process, but not be alone while they go through that. And the other part of control them. That's really exactly just allow it to happen. That's right. To have the space to be a big enough container, you know, to say, okay, I'm here, I'm holding. But yeah. there's space. You know, that's a beautiful thing. The yeah. other part of what you said that I just think is so interesting is that when we have not transmuted, when we have not cleared, mm-hmm. and when we don't have that skill of asking mm-hmm. questions of ourselves, when we haven't practiced that or used that before or learnt it before, maybe mm-hmm. no one ever told you that, you yeah. know, yeah. then then that's when we have these big emotional feelings or these big overwhelming moments and we seek to find an answer. And yeah. that I feel like that seeking to find an answer is where the blame can come yes. in. That's where Absolutely. the that's where the you're the reason I'm feeling so, you know, yeah. that's the ego clash thing. But it's often I think just it's not a failure of the person, it's not a no. failure of the system, it's a failure of education, you know, it's that, that or exposure, you know, it's that that yeah. person is not aware that they have that yeah. opportunity at that moment to ask questions of themselves and go within. Yeah. And own it and responsible, you know, responsibly yeah. take the, you know, choose a response. Absolutely. It's a very interesting, I love the way you talk about this, Nancy. Because there is, there is no mistake. Wherever you're at, there is no mistake. You know, I spend quite a long time, like I said, I've, I've been in this world, but I spent quite a long time in my younger ages being very emotional in the pain body, in the pain body with this. Yeah. I had all of this knowledge of growing up in a very strong spiritual space yeah but I still went through what I went through in my 20s and in my 30s of a emotional pain body of angst of anger of sadness of confusion of 
of choices I made, choices I didn't make, relationships. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I just came out and went, da, 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 I'm fabulous. <laughs> and I, and I, I must say, that's when we met. So Nancy yeah. and I, you know, to get personal for a moment, and you can get mm -hmm. as personal or not as you like, but um, mm -hmm. we have this beautiful opportunity here, Nancy, to talk in very real terms about who we were and who we are, you know, mm -hmm. and and what happened along the way. And, I mean, we could be here all day if we want to go into detail, but can you give me one example of something? Well, I just, look, I'm not going to go into actually events. No, sure. Of this, but just generally the energy was at the age of 20 and 30, not in power, okay? We all go through that stage where we're not in our power. So what I'm trying to say is that even then with what I knew, okay, I was still moving in a certain way that was very disempowering. Yeah. Not because you, me, or anyone we're bad people. It's because within our beings we are, we have restrictions. Yes. So our energy field, we're restricted. It's when we start moving because, that, because this is the law of energy. Certain ages, the ego, mm. you, the ego is your controller. The ego is driving around it. He or she is a bus driver, mm. okay? So it is that working through, like I said earlier, in Indigenous cultures we go through initiation process. Yes. Okay? Certain ages, babas stay close to the mum. Certain ages, you got to head off with dad and the men, with boys, the girls, with the women, and you learn different things. Mm. 20s, it's a different thing. So that's non-existent. It's coming back, I want to say. It's definitely coming back within a lot of Indigenous cultures, but it's non-existent gen in culture, but it does exist in modern ways. Yes. It's just because they don't, we don't have those structures, we yes. can sometimes be 17 for two decades. And I feel like we <laughs> invite initiations. I mean, if I could... I could think about 10, 10 things that occurred in my life between the age of maybe 12 and 30 mm -hmm. that were incredibly challenging that I had to find my way through. But because we are not in a context of ritualised or organised initiations, it's a hard it was dangerous. It's a hard it was terrifying. It was alone, you know. And yeah. Um, yeah. But that's part of it. But yes. that's the same thing that happens in initiations. Right. You know, when young warriors go through their initiations and, you know, I have incredible colleagues who are, are older elders now that went through their sun bats yeah. initiation, you know. So and different warrior initiation, different initiation for women. But the thing is we're all, that's what life is. Yes. But the, the, the whole thing is, is there is a time. There is a time and it's natural for all of us. There is a time to be a child, to be the maiden, to be the woman and then moving into the wise and it's the same counterpart for the men. So in that is the energy and emotions. Because of the way the planet is and has been, that's all muddled up. Mm. So you have 30-year-olds that are still in the maiden time, still yeah. 17, and that's the wounds. So... As you move through, what it is, what is really important is a really simple thing that I do every day is to remind myself that I am becoming, it's a bit of a word, that I am becoming what I am already. Mm. So what that does, that's an alchemy term, what that does is assist in the transmutation of the ego into spirit, matter into spirit. I am become what I am already. Nice. Okay? Yeah. Yes. So because you are, you, we are already whole, we are, it's all there, we're already connected, we are wise, but we have been individually and on the planet in a space of disconnect. Yes. And, and that's ha been happening for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes. So you, as you said, Elena, in everyday life is moving in that consciousness. So that's how I move in my everyday life. Mm. It's like, and it's, it's 
really, it's really simple, you know. It's simple as when I'm in the shower, you know, I, I connect with water coming yes. through and connect with cleansing. Like this morning cleanse and I went, okay, let's bring in the royal blue colour because I'm feeling a bit low. Yes. So it's those sort of things. It's yeah. charging my water with energy. It's clearing the space every day. And that is simple as opening the windows up, letting the energies that have let, that have been coming off our body and being mm. clear it out. Yeah. You know, so it's it's part of life. It's how it's how you move in your space. Do you move in your space in a disconnected way or in a connected way? And the way I move in my space is different in the way you or anyone else will move. Yeah. But the, the common thing we have is we move in our space connected, okay, yes. in yes. a connected way with, this is a bigger picture, with the earth and the stars. Yes. Okay? Because we are in between the stars and the earth and the pool of energy and when we move into that, alignment with the earth and stars our whole life changes our whole and so what happens is you start bringing into your life magic synchronicity in simple ways and and it's and it's not done from the mind it's so not done from I agree because you're in this frequency and vibration and that's what it is to have that every day it's just normal mm. It's just normal. So, like, for many people walking through these times, a lot of fears are coming up, yeah. a lot of confusion, a lot of noise. Yeah. And so it's like bringing up, it's actually an opportunity because what it's doing on mass is asking people to clear because mm. we're in an awakening process. So if you're feeling a bit off, it's because your unfinished business or the pollutants is being stored to be released. Yes. You know? So sometimes I think, oh, my goodness, it's many people are being forced mm. by the energies to go into an initiation, mm. you know? Absolutely. And, it's, it's, and it's, it's almost what we call, because it hasn't been here, has not been on the planet for eons, and I can even date back to when it stopped, but what we lack, what we lack as 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 a collective, yes, and as a mass consciousness, we lack spiritual resilience, yes, because we have been living for a long time mm. in privilege. I looked around. I was speaking with a couple of elders, and we looked around. And we went that many people in the Western world mm. have not known the suffering as a collective, yes. when we look at what's happening with people around the world. It's yeah. not having a go, but it's like some of the stuff that's being pushed is for us to develop spiritual resilience because yeah. we'll get through this time. We're being called to clear and shift our disconnection, our perception that we are not connected, that we are not brothers and sisters do you understand the time of i i i i the time of the seagulls is over it's really interesting so, so for some reason last night i was thinking about displaced people so you and i both come from cultures that's you know from other places our mm -hmm. cultures are from other places and i was thinking about what that does for us mm -hmm. epigenetically epigenetics being the way that the experiences of our ancestors are encoded in our cells today. It's scientific. It's not woo-woo. Like that's full science. Mm -hmm. We have genetic codings that are in our cells from the traumas of our ancestors, from the winds of our ancestors, from the displacement of our ancestors. And I think it's something that I've, I feel like it's a lifelong quest of mine to mm -hmm. understand that coding mm -hmm. and to help others understand that mm -hmm. coding and how it plays out for us. And it's just really interesting as you're speaking, and I, and I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm most likely I'll be attempting to achieve a black belt 
level with my mm-hmm. martial arts next year. And I was thinking about when you mentioned spiritual resilience. So a black belt or any martial arts training really, if it's done with any sort of philosophy or ethical component, which the one that I do is, you know, mm-hmm. Um, there's a massive aspect of spiritual resilience and you watch people walk that Mm. path as they approach black belt and go beyond black belt, you know, and I train with masters who are six, seven black belts, you know, and it's amazing because we get to see it. We get to see people walk that path and actually enact it, embody it with their skill, with their approach, with their education, the way we teach the way we are as a community, it's this kind of microcosm of what you're talking about. Yes. And, and I, you know, every now and again I do question it. I'm like, why the hell am I going this place? Couple of, you know, it's one of the black belts last night, this awesome woman who's also been on this podcast, Mel Thomas. She, we were doing our black belt pattern, which is called the eagle yeah. pattern. It's very beautiful, but it's very intense. It's very hard and challenging. And she said, come on, guys, remember you're paying for this. You're paying to come here. Nobody's forcing you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a reminder of how we voluntarily, not just voluntarily, we pay to walk this path. You know, yes. we, we come and we show up and we give of ourselves on many levels, financially, emotionally, spiritually, to participate with our bodies. We pay with our bodies. We get thrown around. We get thrown through the air, thrown to the ground. We come home with bruises. And it's yes. hard, I think, for people to understand. Like why would, me, you know, ostensibly middle class Yes. Sort of stay at home, mum, teacher, three kids, you know, fairly privileged life. Why would I go and punch and get punched? And, you know, that doesn't make sense. But in the context of what you're saying, it really does, you know, because we need it. It's like, you see, I'm very clear. Especially in this day and age. We need it. Especially we've gone soft. We've gone soft. So for ages we've gone soft. We've had incredible privilege. We're in, I'll just mention Australia, we're in a country, sunshine. We've had for years and years and decades sunshine, the good life, go to the beach, abundance. Economically stable. Mm. Yeah, abundance, everything. It's There's destabilising going on. Don't be afraid. Yeah, this is part because it, the destabilization has been is happening all over this planet. Yeah, it's just in certain places where they haven't experienced it. Often, Europe have felt that destabilization strongly with World War Two. They've gone through their different journeys. What happened in World War Two? You see the destabilizations in places like Israel and Palestine. You see the destabilization in Afghanistan. You see it in the environmental aspect within the South Pacific, yeah. Hawaii, the First Nations in Americas and America generally. There's been destabilization. Australia's been very well protected. Yeah. Okay. But now there's a bit of destabilisation and it's affecting a lot of people. I see it all the time. So that is then spiritual resilience needs to be developed because ultimately when, and I'm sharing this as a seer, so I'm moving out of Nancy, friend, but as a seer, ultimately this nation that we're on, that we've chosen to be here on, is being called to step up. Yes. We have to remember this. We are in a country, a land that is as ancient, 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 ancient. That doesn't even cover it. I'm just, you know. Yeah. And my thing that I've been saying, we need to now move into the remedying of our connection with the First Nation people of this land, the Aboriginals, Mm. because that is the key for us and that is the key for the planet to move out of this artificial constructs and consciousness that has been revealed because that art of thank you that artificial construct yeah. that is on this planet has been here for eons yeah. it started to take its roots strongly after the industrial revolution in world war 2 yeah. It really made itself grounded and set and, and grounded the constructs. Mm. So the remedy, as Spirit has been saying when we go when I go into conference with the ancient ones, is the remedy is in the indigenous ways. What does that mean? That means connection. Yeah. 
What does that mean for places like Australia and the Americas and Alaska? You need to start doing some healing with the First Nation people. And first of all, I say to a lot of my clients and people who follow the platform is that has to, you have to go in and, and look Look at your stuff. Look at your beliefs. Look at your stuff around the indigeneity of this planet, the people, yes. nature. If that's because that's the separation within you with your yes. connection, your connection to land, your connection to the waters. Mm. It's not in your head. You have to really go in there and, and, and see that because that is the remedy of moving us out of here you know, moving us out of what we call those artificial constructs because that is the gateway that connects us back to Mother Earth. Yes. Okay. Because in ancient First Nation law, L-O-R-E. Yes. Okay. Is the wisdom and the information and the medicine of how we are going to be moving out of this time. Mm. The waterways, I've been saying this for ages, the waterways will continue. We'll see more of that because that's the cleanse, but it's just more than the cleanse. There is an attempt from nature mm. to really transmute, that's a word, to change, mm. okay, to change what's been buried and, and established on this planet, mm. on this planet, not planet, on this planet. You know, so this is all that, this is, we're in the time of the ascension, the wake up time. We'll all get through this. Without a doubt, I've seen it. We'll get through this. Yeah. Okay. Because that's where we're heading. We're just in that space, individually and collective. We're having to get rid of staff from our being. And from our shadows, our shadows are coming up going, hey, sweetie, remember me? Mm-hmm. You thought you left me at Mr. Good Bars? Well, here I am. <laughs> okay, you that did was a leave nightclub. me at Mr. Good That was a fantastic Bars. nightclub, let me just say. Yeah. Oh, my God. You left me at Mr. Good Bars and you oh. ran out the door with that guy <laughs> I told you not to be with. But yes, yeah. you've got so much history here, so much mm-hmm. history, uh, mm-hmm. different lives of ours from earlier, younger days, which have been coming up a lot online, by the way, lots of beautiful photos of all that time and all of our Oh, wow, lives. you have to send that. Oh, what makes you? Yeah, amazing. Yes. But I think what's so interesting about what you're saying, so I often, quite regularly, I will have conversations with other mm-hmm. white people who are not doing what we're talking about here. Now, I'm just going to call all of those white people right now and say, hey, guys, it's okay. You can come out now. You can say that you don't understand and you can say that you don't get it and you can talk to your black friends. And I'm not talking about colour of skin here. I'm talking about how you are in your heart, whether you have been brought up with white culture or black culture, okay? I'm not talking about skin colour. I'm talking about your experience. If you have not had an experience that involves Indigenous wisdom, that involves Indigenous law, Mm -hmm. that involves feeling deeply on land, Mm -hmm. go and seek it out. In Sydney, Mm -hmm. there is a walk you can do in Botanic Gardens with Aboriginal guides. It's amazing. And and also at the rocks. It's a really good friend. Everywhere. A really good friend of mine, she's a knowledge holder. Great. Annie Margaret, Annie Margaret, she does the rocks tours. Beautiful. And she's, she's an incredible elder that has carries knowledge of the stars. Incredible. Yes, I'm going to do and that. She, so she knows all this area. There's but, so much. There's so much. And and there's a even where we live, we live in the northern beaches, the number of times that I've said, you know, there's an Aboriginal heritage office in Freshwater mm-hmm. Village. Mm-hmm. People go, is there? Where is it? I'm like, you walk past it every day. And I think what's happened for a lot of people, and I can't speak for everyone, but my feeling, my intuition is telling me a lot of people have tuned it out because it's too complex and it's too hard and I don't want to do the wrong thing and I feel kind of guilty for my ancestors' behaviour or I don't want to feel guilty for the behaviour of my ancestors and all that shit, whatever, get over it. Go and educate yourself. Put yourself in a place where you can learn. There's no excuse. Absolutely. There's no and, nothing and, to be worried about. No one's going to bite your head off. Just go and do it. Go and get into it and seek and it just, out. Just Don't expect others people. to find you. And, and Lane, I really want to say this too, you know, that, that that's really important. But in everyday life, in everyday life, 
I, I know with a lot of Indigenous, Indigenous people, they feel not seen. Right. Or when they are seen, they feel the heaviness yes. of preconceived yes. beliefs and perceptions. Yes. And they feel and they feel that it's just time to stop that shit. Absolutely. I'm serious. It's that just that's sure. just it, it's time to stop that. So again, it's going in and going, why do I feel this yes. when I see a person that's different? Yes. Okay, because it's not about the person being different. It's about, and it's not having a go at you because we all, I don't care who we are, we all have our own internal prejudice that might have we've learned growing up. That's how we're made. culturally and generational. Absolutely. But what I'm saying that this time, it's yes. time for that yes. to be deleted within yes. our being because we've been called to move into the new Yes. Okay, we're call, be calling to move to New York. On a bigger picture, I'm always going, it's time for the First Nation people of this yeah. land to be taken off yes. from the Constitution as flora and fauna. Oh, fuck yes. All this is the energy that affects the consciousness. You know, there's these perceptions about Indigenous people that are, it's so bloody boring and I'm over it. You know, yes. it's just, it, it's, it's, a lot of Indigenous people around the world have become the projection yes. of a, other cultural unfinished business. Right. You know, we'll blame these people. Yeah. And, and, and we're living it now, but guess what? What's going on in the bigger picture is affecting everyone, no matter who you are. Yeah, of course. Because it's now moving out because it's about, in the old days, whether you, whatever culture you come from, this has always been the mainstay. Every culture, from the Celtics, yep. from Israeli, from the Middle East, from here, from the Americas, from the Pacific, Africa, Asia, the thing that we all have worked on and worked on and lived upon is the Great Circle, Okay. It is in all of our cultures. And what does the great circle represent? It represents mother, mm. mother earth. Mm. So, you know, that's what coming through. Yes. I mean, there we go. Thanks, darling. And I think what's really interesting about what you're saying is that those questions that we ask, we must understand that it is up to us to ask them. That's a personal <laughs> journey. We don't yeah. go up to an Indigenous person and say, help me understand. Help me understand yeah. why I am this way towards you. No. no. It is not up to anybody but us yes, it's ourselves. It's just out why you responsibility feel bad. for our own education yeah. and to expect others to understand us. The time has passed for that now. You yeah. know, like you understand yourself. You go and seek yeah. that out for yourself and the betterment of all of us, for the betterment yeah. of the human race, the one human race. You know, yeah. like we're one race. So it's like let's think more in, in those bigger terms. And like we've mentioned a few times, the bigger containers, you know, yeah. bigger containers. We don't have to be so kind of um, and don't, myopic, and don't, you know. And, don't, and you're right, Elena, don't be putting it out to yeah. First Nation people because <laughs> that's projecting it out. it out again, projecting it out. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy stuff. You know, it's projecting out again. Bring it back and go. Why? Why do I feel this? Why? Why is my buttons being pushed when yeah. I walk through a certain area, or when you know, being or or, yeah, or man, first just Google it. Don't through. go and ask the local. <laughs> just Google it and yeah. work it out for yourself. <laughs> Yeah. And if you really want to have a conversation <laughs> with somebody of a particular culture, be very, very understanding and gentle, and because, yeah, because ask, when you ask, ask nicely, <laughs> yeah, and just and just it, it's respect. Yeah, show and you respect. Just, that's that's all the that's all it is. Because I would never go up. I would never go up to a white fella, and I, and I never go up to a white fella and go, "Hey, how come your ancestors came and stole yeah. land and yeah. just <laughs> took over and just." walked on like how can we just did that how can like yeah you so know why what would it I mean? go the other way that's right exactly and this kind of idea that we own knowledge you know that we yeah. are that we are entitled to knowledge mm. of certain things like knowledge is really sacred and and I think Absolutely. that we must treat it as such yeah. and that if a story is shared with us we must be reverent in that moment yeah. not yeah. entitled 
you know. And yeah, that's exactly. a super big shift that I think is beginning to happen. I yeah. have an amazing friend who's been um, one of my very few Indigenous friends, I will admit, and she is in uh, Melbourne Fashion Week doing this incredible stuff with this great organisation <laughs> called Trading Black. Look it up, B-L-A-K. Amazing. <laughs> and they just had a Fashion Week um, runway show and, like, it's just beautiful all Aboriginal owned and run stuff you know and I and I just all I want to do with her is like okay I want to be an ally but I also want to be an ally in the terms that you set I'm not going to be an ally in the terms that I set or the way that I think I should be I'm going to say to you what can I do yeah how can I support you and I would hope that the same with the other way you know it's an equivalent relationship and and it is and at first it's going to be a delicate balancing yes but it's a shift it's a shift it's a shift it's been like this yes and as the shift occurs it's it's going to this and sometimes it might go the other way in in first nation people's consciousness because you know we're all people so a lot of first nation people are, are, are going through processes Yes. Of, of clearing what we call their, you know, uh, colonialised, um, you know, colonial, what do you call it, colonialised, um, the impact of it. Yeah. You know, so there's all of that. But we could go on about this. I feel like we could. Time. And I'm not an expert, <laughs> so we probably better not. But um, <laughs> I'm at... I feel like we've come to a beautiful end to our lovely conversation, Nancy, and I could talk all day with you, my love. You are such a beautiful friend and I'm so pleased that you came on here to talk with us. Thank Thank you so much for bringing your wisdom. (laughs) And can you tell me, please, um, the name of your organisation? I'll also put it in the show notes. So where can people find you? uh, I have a website, www.nancyvalentinesmith.com. So I have a website. I also run... um, I have a free subscriptions that I um, share updates on what's happening on the planet at this time and just sharing information and a bit of knowledge. And then I do have a, a membership called New Revelations and in that membership um, there is a lot of uh, work that we do during the month of of each month of activations, healings, and so forth. But um, I'll give that information to you and everyone can find yeah, it. I'll on put the a link to this video, no problem. Yeah. Nancy, from my heart to yours, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Elena. Thanks, Daniel.